r slash ask reddit by reddit and chill. What is your fake it till you make it story? I George Costanzad my way into a job in high school. I was looking for a new job and went to apply at a local movie theater. The general manager asked to interview me on the spot. Which I wasn't at all prepared for. But went with it anyway. This was like a Wednesday or Thursday night. The interview went well. And she told me she was going to be out of town this weekend. But she would let me know on Monday. I didn't want to wait. So the next day at school I got my work permit filled out and took it back. I dropped it off to another manager and told them she told me to bring this crap in. They asked if I could start the next day. I ended up working there for over 3 years. This guy hired himself. I'm an artist who works in the film industry. Some years ago my wife got pregnant, purposefully, and I had to try to find a way to make more reliable income while she was on mad leave and for the foreseeable future. As we knew we weren't only having one. I also wanted to stay in film. I got work as a grip. Grunt work lugging things around set and building setting up large bits of lighting gear. No clue what I was doing. I started off on big shows like The Flash and Arrow. A friend got me work on a small set and only 13 days into working as a grip. Which I didn't tell them. They made me the key grip. Key is film talk for manager. I was in charge of a whole department which is one half of the lighting team. Faked it until I made it. Fast forward over 5 years. I have over 30 credits to my name as a key grip. I own an entire 5 ton trucks worth of gear that I rent out. Which makes as much money per show as my wage did. My wife is back at work after having two kids and I'm a stay at home dad with consistent passive income and the time to continue to write and audition whenever I need. That's great you imagined doing it and you succeeded at it. I'd always been interested in programming. As a kid I tried to teach myself C and Java with mild success. Fast forward to the time I'm 24. I'm working as a piercing apprentice at a tattoo shop making $20 a day a few days per week. I meet a girl. Fall for said girl. Girl ends up pregnant. A few hours after the pregnancy test I'm applying for jobs on Craigslist and I find a PHP job a few minutes up the road. I've worked with PHP for maybe a few hours in my entire lifetime but it was a tiny company and the interview wasn't technical. I lied through my teeth the entire time and get hired. After being hired I tried to start learning PHP on the job. The owner of the company created his own PHP framework which was god awful so I couldn't figure it out for the life of me. I got fired 2 weeks later. In those 2 weeks on the job I made an honest effort to learn more about web design and development so I offered my design services to a local web design company for free so that I could learn. Walking home after being fired I called up the web design company and they ended up hiring me. I would learn on the job for a year or so and then take my skills to get more money somewhere else. 10 years later I'm the lead software engineer on a big project making just over 6 figures. If a pregnancy test hadn't scared me to death that day I would still be working dead end jobs to scrape up enough money for weed and booze. Are you still with the girl? My entire professional career. I played with computers growing up in so far as I knew how to turn one on. Download a game. And play them very well. I knew next to nothing about building them. Or troubleshooting them. Usually depending on my friends to help when my second hand PC threw a shit fit. It cut to me. Fresh out of college with a waste of paper degree looking for a job. I get hired by an IT contractor. Cause I knew a gal that knew a guy. With the understanding I needed to know the basics. I didn't know shit. I made it up as I went along. Googling the living shit out everything. That was 10 years ago. I'm now a systems administrator. Still googling the living shit out of everything. Right? I felt like I was reading my life story there ha. Huh? I taught a class on a specialty software program. I was learning the software myself and I was literally one class ahead of the people I was teaching. You sound like my commsal teacher. Though she openly admitted to our class that she was basically doing the class with us. Fortunately the class was extremely easy and didn't really require much teacher guidance. Not me. But my cousin applied for a brand new restaurant job and didn't get it. Her friend got the job and she was pissed she didn't get hired. So her friend told her where when orientation was. 
and she decided to fake getting hired till she made it. She went to orientation. All the training. Introduced herself to all the staff. Management. And made her presence known. After a couple of weeks working. Everyone got their paychecks. Except her. She went up to management. And was like WTH. Everyone got paid but me. You've seen me working for the last two weeks. Management goes into the computer system and checks that so weird you're not in the system. I'm so sorry. Must be a clerical error. We will get you in the system. And paid right away. And that's how my cousin fake got hired till she made it. I wanna be like her when I grow up. Well now I gotta find out if this works or not. I started at a big ol' multinational in retail as a college dropout. I started at the lowest rung of customer service in a store. Now retail has lots and lots of staff turnover. And a multinational has a shitton of rules. Or you'd expect them to have. Also. I'm not the dumbest around, never mind the college dropout that's another story, and well to be fair not everyone in retail is super smart. So there was a consistent lack of management, or they didn't care, and all the rules and regulations had gaps in them. So people start asking questions. How do I solve this? What should I do next? Etc. Nobody had an answer to this questions. So I started answering them using common sense or what I'd think should work. Just filling the gaps which probably made me look a lot smarter than I am. Just faking that I knew what I was doing. So I started climbing the ladders and I am now the senior finance and operations director for a store with a gross turnover of over 160 million euros. However. Cracks are starting to show. The company got a lot more serious and I'm surrounded by smart people with high degrees where I can't bluff my way through problems and meetings as easily. So. I'm thinking of taking a step back and relaxing a bit more on lower position. I was a lot happier then and had way less stress and way less hours. TLDR. Faking works until it doesn't. You don't have to take a lower position necessarily. See if the company can send you to some professional development workshops or even take a community college course on some of the stuff you don't feel strongly about. Imposter syndrome can run strong for a lot of working professionals. Take a course or two and hopefully it will help to bridge some of those gaps. Sleeping. I fake trying to do it till I'm surprised by the real thing. Cries in insomnia. During college. I worked part time as a deli clerk in a grocery store. I had zero experience with deli items, didn't know head cheese from salami. Or provolone from Munster. So. I'd explain to customers that I was new and ask them to point to items in the case that they wanted and what the sign indicated for the price per pound. They always seemed happy to help out, especially when I gave them free samples from the slicing machine. Hey this kid has been new for over 10 years now. I was desperate for a job several years back so I wrote up this resume that was utter horseshit on a whim granted some of it was legit but a good 80% was me bullshitting. Amazingly enough I got a call for an interview and by some miracle they ended up hiring me and I worked for the place for 7 years before something I was actually qualified for opened up at another workplace. That bullshit resume saved me from ruin though so I always will look back in that crazy situation fondly. What was the job you had for 7 years? My piece of shit druggy brother-in-law used to lie and said he had heavy equipment operator experience. He'd get the job. And get fire w in a day or two but pick up something small. Did that 15 or 20 times and kept moving around until he learned enough to not get fired. This explains a lot. I always have trouble finding work. But my pill popping half brother can get a job 3 days after getting fired from running a dude's foot over. I had this file thing in elementary school where you have to put all your worksheets in a folder and my teacher will check it at the end of the year. Well. I did not do it and convinced her that I handed in but she lost it. She said she will get back to me, and I'm still waiting. What's the chance that she saw through your bullshit but couldn't be bothered to deal with it? I mean. Who the hell wants to mark a whole year's worth of worksheets right before the summer holidays? My business started by me just saying yes I can do that. I can supply that for you. I had no idea that they would be willing to hear me out. Five years later and I'm now supplying desks and office equipment to over 120 offices in London. You really can go far if you just say yes. 
You really can go far if you just say yes. Well. Yeah the hard part is not saying yes. It's actually following through Lomeo. I'm painfully shy and ducking terrified of speaking in front of people. A few years ago I started volunteering at my local animal shelter and would always sign up for a time slot before the shelter opened to the public so I wouldn't have to deal with people. I kept getting assigned new volunteers to show them the ropes because my time slot was when it was quiet and there wouldn't be interruptions. I really extremely didn't want to deal with people. But I went ahead anyway because it meant I got my own kennel key. I was nervous as hell and didn't know what I was doing but plowed ahead anyway. Then I got the hang of it. Now. Four years later. I'm one of the leads. I have access to restricted areas of the shelter. I'm one of only two volunteers allowed to update the animals notes on the shelter site. And I'm highly respected and considered a role model. I'm still terrified. Proud. But terrified. Last weekend I was at a wedding dance and they played the jit up. No one knew the dance. Including myself. But liquid encouragement kicked in and I'll lead the entire wedding dance, 50 plus people, in a dance that I completely made up on the spot. Everyone was so impressed after that I knew all of the moves. That I didn't tell anyone any different. Edit. Thanks for the silver. My first. Cheers. I hope some of those people are teaching others your made up dance. Social anxiety. I was always the quiet guy up until a few years ago. I decided I was tired of not having friends and I started faking confidence and talking to everyone. In the beginning I was dying inside and felt like I was walking on glass. Now I don't know when to shut up and can talk to just about anyone. Yes. I had a similar experience. I always had friends. But found it difficult to engage with people outside my small circle. I used to get such bad social anxiety that I would throw up before every major social engagement like parties and sometimes in situations where i knew there was definitely nothing to fear like going to lunch with my friends i decided i needed to do something about this so i started paying attention to how a friend of mine who was very good in social situations conducted herself and just copied her after a while i started appearing confident though i still had the anxiety and eventually the anxiety went away almost completely, it still happens sometimes. But I rarely throw up, like, maybe once a year in a really daunting situation. Now people always remark on how confident I am and I always make a point of telling them it's learned rather than innate. My co-worker has a degree in mechanical engineering in another country but was lucky to get a job in the US helping to fix the Y2K bug. He was told to search fear codes and software and edit it a certain way. He was so out of his league that when he made a mistake that he couldn't just backspace to fix he would accidentally turn off the computer to restart it. Just because he didn't know how to undo edits. He's now our lead Java developer. Not even going to lie. I used to trace other people's art so often as a young artist, like 8-10, but now. I have that guidance of technique with me when I create my own pieces. Tracing to learn art isn't bad as long as you don't keep doing it later. If I'm having trouble with just one tree, should I lay down wood chips ahead of time and let them rot for a year? Like a 10 foot circle or something? I have a govt IT job and I have no college experience. Had never used a Windows computer before I was hired. And didn't know what a server was. I've picked it up over the last 4 years. Honestly. I think I have met like 50 versions of people in Govt IT. You can blend in with the crowd but I am happy you actually made the effort to learn. God bless you for being a pack leader. My first job as a programmer I didn't know how to write a single line of code. Was about 12 years ago. I wanted to learn programming and I chose a hot new programming language, Ruby. I did a tutorial for Ruby on Rails, remember the one where you create an e-commerce store with a few lines. EHH. But I had some problems running it on Windows so after I figured it out I documented it on some forum. A guy messaged me that writing a guide shows initiative and they are looking for a Ruby guy. I never say no to anything. We skyped. The guy liked me. And I got the job the next day. Remote. The salary shocked my 19 year old self. The company was a mess at first. It was a new project. 
I was pretending to work for the first 3 weeks while in reality I was learning for 12 plus hours a day using books and tutorials. Somehow I ducking winged it and stayed with them for 3 years. I actually became proficient with Ruby, Python, and JS along the way. Ducking like and subscribe.